In this video, we're going to use a supply and demand diagram to look at the concepts of impact and incidence of attacks. Often when a government places a tax on a business, they are not the ones who end up paying the tax. Businesses have a way of shifting the cost of that tax onto their consumers in the form of higher prices. Putting their prices up, however, leads to a decrease in the amount of products which they sell, and so they also end up facing a cost of increasing, uh, increasing the price of the product, so they bear some of the cost of the tax as well. So we use these two, two terms. One is impact of a tax, and that's the, who the government actually takes the money from, who they originally impose that tax upon. The incidence of the tax is who ends up bearing the burden of that tax. And we're going to have a look at this diagram and show how that's usually a mixture of the consumer and the producer. Originally for this product, we have a supply and demand curve meeting at equilibrium and leading to an equilibrium price of P and an equilibrium quantity of Q. Now we're going to say the government is placing a tax on the product which is sold in this market. Very often this is uh, used for products which could affect the health of the community, like cigarettes or alcohol, and the government decides that they will decrease the quantities sold of these products by placing a tax on it. Some other people might suggest, however, that what the government is really doing is getting revenue off products which have a relatively inelastic demand. And so we find on something like cigarettes, for example, that an increase in the price doesn't really lead to a huge decrease in the quantity sold, but it does raise revenue for the government. By imposing a tax, the cost to businesses of producing that product has gone up, and so at each price level, they'll be less willing to supply that product. So what we have as a result of this tax is a decrease in supply. We need to remember that we're not saying that this is an increase in supply as the curve moves up. We're actually saying that the supply curve is moving in this direction. So we're looking at the quantity down on the horizontal axis and, so, and say we're moving horizontally to the left. So now we have a new supply curve at S2, and it's going to give us a new equilibrium point, which will be here. Now we need to know that S2 isn't really the supply curve for this product. It is the supply curve with the addition of a tax on that particular product. So what that means is that here at P2, that is not actually the price which the, which the business receives. They still receive uh, the amount down here. And we'll call that amount there P3. Now at this new quantity level of Q2, Businesses are receiving the price of P3, but consumers are having to pay the, pay the price of P2. So this means the amount of tax which is received is this distance from P2 to P3, which is the same as this distance here. So, so that original level of the tax of that light blue amount that was the reason why the supply curve shifted to that place there. Before the tax, this yellow area was the revenue received by the business for the sale of this product. But the revenue received changes from the yellow area into this red area here. And of this total red area, this blue area is revenue which is received by the government. So the revenue which used to be received by the business was the large yellow box. It changes now into the small red box. 
there is the total amount of revenue of the red box plus the blue box, but the blue box represents taxation pay, paid to the government. Now, originally we said the impact of the tax was on the businesses. They were the ones from whom the government was receiving the revenue. We can see now, however, that they do not pay all of the, all of the tax. Consumers used to pay at the price level of P, but now they pay price level P2. So consumers are paying extra for the products which they consume. The consumers who used to pay P are now paying P2. So the revenue which comes directly from the consumers and given to the government is this area here. So some of the incidence of this tax falls on consumers in the form of higher prices. Producers have to make up the rest of the tax. And so while the impact of the tax was on producers, only a small part of the impact of the tax in this particular example is paid by producers. But the incidence of the tax is shared by consumers in the blue area and producers in the red area. Now the extent to which the taxation is shared between the producer and consumer depends on the relative elasticity of the supply and demand curves. Basically, whichever side of the market has the more inelastic curve, they will end up paying more of the tax. So in this example, we see a relatively inelastic demand curve with a, a change in supply from S1 to S2. We're going to have government revenue equal to these two squares placed together with the consumers paying the top square. So the consumers here are paying most of the tax. We'll see what happens if the demand curve is more inelastic. So this is the, the new demand curve. Based on what we said before, because now the supply is going to be more inelastic, we'll expect that producers are going to be paying more of the tax. So here we see that the amount of the tax is this amount here, and the amount of revenue received is this amount here, but consumers are only paying now this small box here, and producers are paying the rest of that blue box. So because now demand is more inelastic, then the sharing of the tax will fall more onto the producers. You could do the same thing by keeping the demand curve at one level and changing the elasticity of the supply curve. Basically, whichever side of the market has the least amount of ability to change, so the one who is more inelastic, that will be the one who ends up bearing the greater amount of the taxation.